Hey humans, what's up? I'm Brianne Williamson. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you aren't already, please hit that subscribe button and join the humans over here on my channel. What am I saying? I don't know, but it would mean a lot if you joined the crew, the fam, the B team. There's nice people around here. Just stick around for a little while. <laughs> Okay, so as you saw by the title, today we are gonna talk about Happiest Season, which is the new lesbian rom-com. I just watched it last night with my girlfriend, Julia, and I have some things to say. A lot of people had a lot of things to say about it. But before we get into that, I just wanna do a quick plug of my merch that I'm wearing right here. It's for my podcast at I Can Explain Podcast over on Instagram, link in bio. We have hoodies, we have t-shirts, we have long sleeves, we have hats, all sorts of fun stuff. And you heard it here first, we have stickers coming. So uh, go check that out. Also, if you haven't listened to I Can Explain Podcast before, we have over 100 episodes. We're actually getting closer to 110. Um, so yeah, there's a lot for you to listen to. We talk about queer topics. It's a lot of fun. Guaranteed laughs. Um... Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> okay, so happiest season. This has kind of blown up the internet because there was so much hype for it, right? So much excitement um, from the LGBTQ plus community, specifically women loving women um, within that community, that there was going to be a holiday rom-com specifically targeted towards queer women. And that was exciting because that's not something that comes around a lot. So I was seeing everyone's opinions posted online and I tried to ignore it as much as possible because I really wanted to watch with fresh eyes and just try and be unbiased and watch it without knowing that a lot of people have had a negative response. I just wanted to try and enjoy it because honestly, I was so excited for this movie and I didn't want to take that magic away. I wanted so badly to like it. So here are my thoughts. First, before I go into how I personally felt about the movie, I just wanna say that I think everyone's responses to this film has a lot more to do with the fact that we have such a embarrassing lack of representation that we hype any ounce of representation up and hold it to such a high standard. I think that's a good thing. I think that we should hold our representation as an LGBTQ plus community to a high standard, but with that said, I think it's going a little over the top with this film. Here's why I think that. I watch tens of rom-coms every year, okay? That are very heteronormative. It is, you know, a man and a woman, the classic tale of, you know, they're best friends, but are they gonna end up together? Or, you know, you have the ones like The Wedding Planner where the guy's with another girl, the girl's uh, awful human being, so you root for the leading lady to kind of steal him away. We've seen that before, and I watch those from such a non-critical place because I'm just watching them to have a light laugh. My mom calls movies like that bubblegum for the brain. You're not sitting down and expecting your mind to be blown. It's not gonna like open up some new huge window of thinking and perspective on the universe, okay? It's probably not gonna stick with you for a long time. You're not gonna be talking about that movie for years to come, unless it's just because it's a joyful movie for you and you like to watch it. Um, every now and again, but not because it's a game changer. You know what I mean? Because of that, I think that the happiest season really didn't stand a chance from the jump because us as queer people, we were going into that film wanting it to be the holiday rom-com that we had been waiting for. And when I say we, I mean each queer woman individually who watched that movie is going to have a different standard of what they wanted out of that film, right? Because as LGBTQ plus people, we are not all the same. We are so far from being the same. We have different experiences. We have different experiences that we want represented, different experiences that we don't want represented because we find them triggering. Um, our perceptions on what it means to be queer are so different. Our perceptions on 
family and how coming out should go and our expectations for our partners when we're on that path or journey, um, our experiences being the person who's in the closet or being the person who's dating the person in the closet. There's so, so many different perspectives and that's amazing. But as queer people, when we see a film like this come out that has a star studded cast that's going to be streaming on major platforms, we go, finally, a film for us. But the problem is us means so many different things. They're never going to be able to make a film for us. Okay. No one is going to agree on what that film should look like, what it should say, how it should represent us because we're all so different. So it was doomed. It was doomed from the start, in my opinion. And it all just comes back around to the fact that we need more representation because when you have hundreds of holiday films that represent a straight cisgendered couple that you get to pick and choose from every year, then you put less weight on each one. You're like, yeah, that one was kind of okay. I don't know. I didn't really like that she ended up with that person in that one. I don't know. That guy was kind of a dick. I didn't really find that one funny. The writing wasn't great there. It kind of wrapped up quick. You, you don't really think too much about it. You watch it, you take it or leave it. But with a film like this, because we lack representation, we want it to be exactly what we want it to be. And that's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen for everybody. A perfect example of this is the fact that Hallmark as a station network channel, whatever you wanna call it, makes hundreds, hundreds of holiday movies every single year. This year, for the first time, they have one movie representing a gay couple. For the very first time, that is happening. They are leading the cast as a gay male couple, and there's only one. So you can imagine that there is going to be a lot more weight put on that one Hallmark movie because everyone's been waiting so long for it. Everyone wants it to be the magical Hallmark film, but gay as can be that they've been dreaming of. Whereas other Hallmark movies, I could put them on the TV, you know, play them in the background for hours and not really even notice that they've moved on to the next film. Like the storyline doesn't mean that much to me. So that's what I wanted to start by saying, because I do think that we need to check ourselves as queer people sometimes and realize what we're watching. We're watching a rom-com. This movie was not marketed to us as some ground breaking, thought provoking, perfect representation of what it means to be LGBTQ+. It was marketed as a romantic comedy, a lighthearted romantic comedy. And from there, I will go on to say that a lot of people felt the opposite way. They didn't want more out of it. They actually kind of wanted less. They wanted it to be more lighthearted, more funny. They found it triggering the way that the coming out experience was represented. That is so valid. It is so valid to have whatever feelings that you had while watching Happiest Season, even if they weren't happy ones. But I will say to that, that the movie did not hide that that is what it was about. The movie was marketed as a holiday coming out story. That's what they said it was. So when I'm seeing all of this backlash afterwards of people being like, can we just have a movie for once that isn't about coming out? Or can we just have a movie that it doesn't seem like the queer protagonist is trying to please uh, their parents or their family during their coming out experience? I agree. We definitely need more of that. I do think it's getting better. I think that there's some amazing um, TV shows in particular that have been showing more of that lately. When it comes to representation, would it be nice to have a holiday film where we get to just laugh and there's none of that in it? Absolutely. But this was not that. This was a coming out story and this was a queer experience that I think is very common. I think a lot of people, whether they wanted to see that play out or not, can relate to that experience, can relate to the holidays being different for queer people. I would say that most queer people have experienced to some degree the holidays being more of a pressure cooker than heterosexual people might. 
because they have all these added layers of, do I bring my partner around? Not just because am I ready for them to meet my family, but maybe I'm not out. Maybe I'm out, but I don't know if I'm comfortable enough. I know that there's going to be uh, different reactions within my family. Um, I think that as queer people, there might be some weird traditional ties to the holidays that we don't agree with or that we feel uh, segregated from. So as much as I would love there to be a plethora, is that even the right word? I don't know. Let's hope of films that show all different sorts of queer experiences, ranging from coming out to not coming out at all, to more of a just regular rom-com script that happens to have um, two queer leads, I think that would be fantastic. But do I also think the story of a very relatable queer experience deserves to be told? Yes. I can't think of a time that I have seen that added level of pressure during the holidays as a queer person shown on screen. I haven't seen it personally. So for me, that was actually really cool to see. I was like, maybe this will make some people understand why the holidays can be more stressful for queer folks. Maybe they'll understand that as family members of queer folks, you could be putting a lot of added pressure on them during the holidays, or they feel like they have to hide or they can't share their loved ones when the holidays should be about sharing your loved ones and bringing them around your family. So to all those people that were upset that this was a coming out story, they watched it and then they felt triggered by that, I hear you and your feelings on that are completely valid. That said, this was very, very clearly marketed as a coming out story. This was not a surprise. That was part of the trailer. That was part of the synopsis. When you pulled it up on the streaming service that you watch it on, it's right there. That's what it is. So to me, you know what you're getting into, right? And is it frustrating as a queer person to not have another option to not say, I don't want to watch a holiday story about coming out. I'd like to watch a holiday story about a couple that have something else going on instead that also represents me as a queer person. Would that be amazing and ideal? Absolutely. Should we be able to have choices? Absolutely. But again, I do not think that that is a problem with Happiest Season. I think that is a problem with representation in general. People should be able to document whatever queer experience that they feel they need to document on TV or film. We should just as consumers have more choices in what type of queer TV and film we want to consume. So that's my thoughts on that. I think that the film delivered what was marketed. It was a rom-com. Did it have some terrible writing and edits? Yes. Do most rom-coms? Yes. Um, were some of the characters very annoying or strange? Yes, like the very angry sister um, and the physical fight that ensued with the angry sister. But do we see that in most rom-coms that there is some over elaborate or over dramatic scene, especially among family members? Yes. Did the resolve at the end seem to come too quickly and a lot of the different storylines weren't properly resolved or summed up? Yes. Do we see that in most rom-coms? Yes. <laughs> like any rom-com I can think of that I've ever watched, those things are there. So this followed that format of a rom-com. It didn't go too deep. It summed it up quickly. It was all happy and nice at the end without any real digging um, of resolve. And um, honestly, I can't be mad at it because that's what I expect out of a rom-com. <laughs> So before I get into the things that I didn't like about the film, I just want to say that as a queer person for me, I enjoyed it. I thought it was refreshing for me to see that coming out experience, that added pressure on the holidays, um, put into a lighthearted holiday film. I think for me, that is going to create conversation with uh, non LGBTQ plus friends and family. I think for me, it was cool to see that experience, um, actually written into a holiday film with such a star studded cast. It was relatable for me. I felt seen in a lot of ways in different ways. Sometimes I felt seen as Abby's character being the person who's dating someone who's not out. And sometimes I felt seen as Harper being the person who's not out and stressing about my family finding out or friends finding out. Here are the things I did 
not like about the film. First, yes, it's a rom-com and you can kind of expect this with the writing, but the best friend John character, it irritated me so much. He was so against Abby's relationship with Harper for like the whole movie. And then Harper did something actually really shitty. And then he was like, oh, but I'm team Harper. Go for it, Abby, be with her. It was just such a strange shift because I felt like that character should have maintained the, I don't know about this Harper girl thing, or maybe come around to it a bit, but shouldn't have been the person like pushing for Abby to stay with her because it just didn't make sense with his opinions in the rest of the film. Two, justice for Riley, absolutely. I am team Riley. First of all, Aubrey Plaza is so stunning. I have such a crush and she's amazing. I think she's an amazing actress. I love her and everything, but it was so cool to see her um, in this film playing a queer character. And I felt her storyline was very relatable too. Like I got bits and pieces from all different characters, but they gave her so much and then so little, which once again, we also kind of expect in rom-coms, like they just kind of take it or leave it with characters that aren't the two main leads. You don't get a full summary of where everyone stands at the end, usually in rom-coms, but I wanted it so bad for Riley. I really did because I just really liked her character and I am on team Abby and Riley. Maybe not Abby and Riley, but maybe just Abby not with Harper and then Abby and Riley going on and finding someone new. <laughs> I saw on Twitter, someone tweet that they want a spinoff of Happiest Season on Riley's life and perspective of the whole thing and then where she's at now. And I would love that. I think the fans of Aubrey Plaza would love that. And I think anyone who watched Happiest Season would go nuts for that. Not that any of the producers or writers of Happiest Season are gonna see this, but that does have my vote. <laughs> I'm gonna give it the green light. Three, yes, the weird sister fight seemed so like aggressive and unnecessary. But then once again, I'm playing devil's advocate in my own mind about this film, okay? Because then I still, I go back to other rom-coms that I've watched for years and I know and love. And I'm like, I didn't find those two over the top when crazy rom-com-esque scenes like that happened. So maybe I'm just finding it too over top because I was like nitpicking this one because I wanted it to be so good. But yeah, the sister thing, it felt a little extreme. I could have done without that being the way it ended. And like the outing thing was obviously triggering for a lot of people, uh, reasonably so. It just seemed extreme. I think that they could have done it in a less aggressive way, even if she still outed her, but just like not in like a full blown argument like that, like more in just so like, oh, I didn't think it was a big deal. That could have been something that they could have done. Okay, now I'm just going off in my own mind, rewriting this film. So yeah, I, I'm in agreement. I thought that that was a little over the top and unnecessary, but all around, do I, strongly dislike this film? No, absolutely not. Would I watch it again and again and put it on a pedestal of like great LGBTQ plus representation and exactly the holiday film that I wanted? No. Do I think though that it did represent pretty well for a rom-com, a component of the queer experience, especially around the holidays? Yes. And it delivered what it told us it was going to be. I have one more very important thing to say about this film, and that is that I'm obsessed with that sister Jane who wrote those books. They were all ragging on her the whole time. And then 10 years later, she dropped those books. That was the real, that was the real win of the film for me, honestly. I, <laughs> I, I do, the character was super annoying, but every rom-com needs a super annoying character in it. I just felt like we all rooted for Jane. I think that the movie was kind of missing that, that there wasn't really someone to root for. So then I weirdly just settled on some subplot character. Who is Jane? Okay, and just when I think I'm gonna be done, I do also have to say that. The writers, in my opinion, did a terrible job of making us root for Abby and Harper. Like it almost made it difficult 
to root for them, which shouldn't be happening in rom-com. Like the two leads, it should be obvious what's going to happen. Like they're going to end up together, but it should make you want that to happen, you know, to root for them through the obnoxiously over the top, tough times that you see unfold in an hour and 20 minutes um, of the rom-com riddled with poorly written jokes and bad editing and a lot of missteps. I would have liked to root for them. I feel like it made it nearly impossible to do so. I'm gonna stop talking because I've been talking forever. That is my opinion on Happiest Season. Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinions. And bottom line, we need more representation so that we have more to choose from and more to enjoy and more to talk about. Uh, if you liked this and you want me to review more LGBTQ plus TV shows, films, I've never really done anything like this before, but I love to talk about it. So if you wanna see more, let me know in the comments down below and let me know what TV shows or films you'd like me to do a review on. Also make sure you are subscribed and that bell notification is turned on. Give this video a big thumbs up, send it to your friends, do all that good stuff. Help this queer out with this YouTube algorithm. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye humans.